This video about Motion Builder continues from our last look at driving a character from an actor. Now I've got a file that we, I've made up recently and this has several takes in. Uh, exercise, walk and yoga. Also one cap scene, I think that's the range of motion. It also has a model in there, I think it has the Aragorn model and two actors for some reason. I think there was two actors in there. Uh, but on exercising here, on this take, I should be able to press play. And I can see that the Aragorn character does move. So he has started to move around, but one of the actors is staying stationary. So I may not actually need that actor, but it may be connected to something, so I'll, I'll leave it in there. So first of all, I just want to look at the navigator and I'll double click the characters icon there and open that one and again Aragorn just to see how it's how it's driven so it's input type actor and the actor is Lori and I can see this take here we've got Larry who just runs backwards and forwards and doing some exercise moves I think he does some star jumps in a minute, minute. so what I want to do is change this animation so the beauty of Motion Builder is that I can do a non-linear animation on this so to start this off, I need to plot the character. So coming into this characters menu here, I can plot the character. And this will allow me to bake this animation to keyframes on this model. Now, I'm using 25 frames a second because our output is PAL video. And I'm just going to press plot onto the skeleton. And what will happen there, it will still actually play through, but you'll see that the this is inactive, this actor now, because it's actually driven by its own rig within there. You can see the actor's going, moving along with him still, but what we'll do is now we'll move on to the story mode and we'll see what we can do with that. So if I right click in this window here, I can insert a character animation track. I can then select Aragor, who's our character, and then finally, I can right click in the window here and say insert current take. And this is a take that's already been plot, plotted, and I can see that because I can see the black marks along the bottom there. Now just to check that it is working and it is driving the character, I can pull that clip backwards and forwards. And I can see that actually the start frame is different and the actor, um, the actor is staying behind the character as I, as I pull that along. So. I'm actually not on frame one, so I'll take it back to frame one. And I just want to find the start of this motion, so I want to create a little loop. So I think from about there, I can just trim back this. I just click on it with the left mouse button, drag that down to the zero point, and what I'm going to do is take that forward as it goes around in a loop, goes forward, and then backwards to about there. Now along the top here I've got some, some tools, one of which is a razor. If I click on the razor it's going to cut that clip in half. So that's useful. And then I'm just going to drag that one out of the way. And so I can see that this clip should fairly much start and stop in the same place. So there's a little bit of movement. I'm just trying to work out the best stopping point for that. So his left leg's going forward in that clip, and as he comes back, his left leg could probably start going forward from there anyway. So now I highlight that clip, and I'm just going to copy paste it. I'm going to see if that just turns around, and you can see there's a little jump in the character there. I'll zoom in a bit so we can see that a bit closer. Um, on the intersection between these two clips, there's a small jump, the head turns, he was looking behind him as he came back, he's looking forward as he goes off. That's the main tell. And also the legs jump slightly, he jumps forward about a foot. So it may be that we just adjust that slightly. The other thing we can do is create a blend. So if I just take one of the clips and drag it back, I can just blend between those two clips. So. There's a little bit of slide on that, so what happens is as he comes round and gets to that point, you see the feet 
on the ground there are sliding but it's actually not very much it's only for a few frames and within this clip I think I'm going to get away with it so it's like he skids to a stop and then he goes back again round again and so what I can do again there is copy paste this clip and just create a much longer sequence so this is going for about 20 seconds now so and that's going into the, the next clip which I'll leave out for now so I'll just rewind that and again I'll press play just to look at it and I can see the characters running forwards and backwards and when it gets to the join here a little skid and he carries on. So it's really useful for extending movement, especially walks and things like that, um, and carrying on an exercise beyond where, where you had it originally. So I'm going to stop that about there. So that's 600 frames, so that's well over 20 seconds. Um, and what we can look at after that is say, okay, well, we've got him stopping at that point what I'm going to do is bring back the clip that was edited away from that so as he comes through you can see he just steps across and forward to this position here then he's looking around on the ground somewhere and then he does some star jumps so uh, I'm not sure what he's doing on the ground there so I'm going to take that bit out so as he comes in to stop I'll just stop it a bit sooner so he comes into that position, stops. If I put the razor blade on that clip and that will cut that one. And I want to stop it, get it just as he comes up to start doing star jumps. Um, the actor's doing star jumps already, so from about there, I'm going to razor that clip again and delete the part that I don't want. Now I can bring these together and it should snap together. I have this magnet turned on over here and so if I press play now I can just see how that is without a blend and you jump straight into it so the final thing I'll do is I'll just drag that back slightly just to create that blend and blend the two together and then he moves straight into the star jumps and again I want him to do star jumps for quite a while so I'm going to pick a point where it's a it's good to do a join of that. So as he just lands there, it's quite awkward to see him. So I'm just going to turn that around. I think what we've got there, you can see him moving forward. So I'll miss that one out. He's jumping on the spot. And I can see his head turning to the right. I think there was a screen on the right there. So he's actually looking at his, uh, his movement. So what I'll do is I'll just take it from the bottom of that jump there where his knees is, are fully bent um, and then I'll just copy paste that clip and that should give me a it's got a dissolve on that so I'll just trim that clip back I can pick up that um, top corner triangle there and I just want to make sure that that one is knees bent going into a, another of these bent so that should have a basic fit and so again I'll copy paste uh, and and again just to make those link up now there's one other thing I need to show you about this, which is the matching, but I'll do that in the next video, as finally here, you just want to be able to send this to Maya. Now, the important thing is to tell it which, um, where the in and out is of the, of the frames. So we're starting at frame zero, but we're going to go up to 840. So I'm just going to type that into the end up here and so it's a little bit more than 840 850 and what I can see is did I type that in right? 850 um, I can see this little yellow and green 
triangle that I can actually pull that along in the in the timeline there. So that sets the in and out point of this the sequence. You've also got a shot track with a similar thing on it. Um, I'm not sure the relevance of that one. I can zoom in on the track as well just to see the whole expanse and the shot track is where you would put a reference video or, or storyboards. Um, you can extend that and, and just make that similar in and out duration. So finally what I want to do is turn this into a take. So what I'm going to do is just say new take here. I'm going to say no to copy the data from the current take to the new take. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click in here and I can say plot whole scene to current take. And that will make this take 002, that will make it the same as what I've got in this story here. So now if I turn the story off, I should be able to press play and I can see my character running around in there. Now it's only 120 frames. So the in and out point has jumped back when I made a new take. So what I'm going to have to do is just change that again. Just something that's a little bit awkward. Um, just to extend that. And I think I might find that the, the movement stops after 120 as well. So what I can do now, I've extended the in and out point. I can again plot whole scene to current take. And that should allow me to watch that through beyond the 120. If I turn the story on, I can check that it's moving. I can right click there, plot whole scene to current take. If I do that again, and then turn the story off. I should be able to see that in that duration here, I'm moving this time slider, that movement is going as per the story edit. Now lastly, I can send this over to Maya so that I can make it render. So I'll just send that as a new scene. That's exported it already. It's just starting to load up Maya. And when that comes in, I should be able to look at that scene, save it, and then set it off to render. Now it's coming into Maya, it's asking me if I want to save changes to the untitled scene. I don't want to save it. And now I know it's coming in. I can see down here it's loading it up. And it may not appear in the center of the screen, but I think it's there. So I'll just open the outliner. I can click on the, the root joint of the character and press F to focus that. Um, turn on some of the options here just to make sure I'm getting the right the right elements going and I can see that it's already set up on my timeline to be the right duration and I can see that slide there from this angle is a lot worse than it was so this is something we're going to look at next we're going to look at doing a walk cycle and that's really where we want to get a precise match and we really want to lead on that was quite a, a nice easy one to start off with which we can we can probably hide that slide by turning the angle around there um, if I just bring that back, as he comes round, you're not going to see the slide so much at this angle. Um, as we come back round, it's going to come in and start doing star jumps. So I just check that at different angles as well. It looked okay to begin with. Um, seems fine. He's got a bit of a wobbly toe, but that seems to be going okay. So I just save that scene within Maya, and just need to set the project before I do that. And so within my computer, I want to get into cube, cube in, and I save it into the folder which I, that which I saved it from. So Aragor, and I'm just going to call that story one. And oh, actually, I'm setting the project still, so I'm not doing that. So I'm just going to set my project, and then I can save the file. I'm going to save that as Aragorn Story One, and save that in there. And then I can render this. So in the next video, I'm going to look at 
a warp cycle and matching the positions of the end of the warp cycle and the beginning. So it's slightly different, but it's the same principles.